morning. It's Tuesday, August 4th, 2020. I'm Russell, and this is Rocky Road Devotions, a few minutes of help for today's journey. Our devotion today is entitled, Be Strong in the Lord, Part 6, The Helmet of Salvation and the Sword of the Spirit. This week we're revisiting a series of devotions from 2016 entitled, Faithful Warriors. It's not something we do often, repeating, but this series bears repeating during times of crisis. So, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 17. Put on salvation as your helmet and take the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. We're continuing our look at what it means to get dressed for warfare, spiritual warfare, that which every Christian faces every day. So far, we've looked at the enemy, we've put on the belt of truth, the body armor of God's righteousness, slipped on the sandals of peace, and picked up the shield of faith. This morning, we put on the ultimate defensive piece, our helmet, and we pick up the indispensable offensive weapon, our sword. First, the helmet of salvation. In his book, A Thinking Man's Guide to Pro Football, Paul Zimmerman quotes a physicist who made a rather startling discovery. When a 240-pound football lineman capable of running 100 yards in 11 seconds collides with a 240-pound running back capable of covering the same distance in 10 seconds, the resultant kinetic energy is enough to move 66,000 pounds, that's 33 tons, one inch. The scientist says further that the collision would deliver to the player's helmet a blow nearly a thousand times the force of gravity. Obviously, modern football helmets must withstand tremendous blows or no player would survive long. The same is true for Christians who face spiritual warfare. Paul knew what he was doing when he told us to put on salvation as our helmet. The phrase put on means to accept or receive from God's hands something which he has prepared for us. What a great picture this is because all we can really do in salvation is accept what God has given us. And then the sword of the Spirit. In December 1986, three masked burglars broke into the Louvre Museum in Paris and stole the 152-year-old diamond-encrusted dress sword of the French King Charles X. A museum spokesman said that the sword, made in 1824 by French artist Frederick Babst for Charles's coronation, has such historical value that one cannot set any value on it. Well, if there was ever a truly priceless sword, it's the Word of God. Hebrews 4.12 tells us, For the Word of God is alive and powerful. It is sharper than the sharpest two-edged sword, cutting between soul and spirit, between joint and marrow. It exposes our innermost thoughts and desires. And then in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15, Work hard so you can present yourself to God and receive his approval. Be a good worker, one who does not need to be ashamed and who correctly explains the word of truth. As a pastor, I rely on the word of God more than anything else I've learned. That's especially true in counseling. When rightly handled, the word will reveal things to people about themselves and their problems about which I could only wonder. There are some counseling techniques that seem to work very well, but upon closer inspection, you'll find these techniques are biblical principles. How vital is God's word? The sword of the spirit is the only offensive part of the soldier's outfit. In Christian living, it's vital for conducting spiritual warfare. Remember, a soldier in every way perfectly outfitted, but without his sword, is only prepared to run away or stand there and take a beating. Let's pray together. Father, we know that running away from the darkness of this world's preferences is not that for which you died. Help us to worthily pick up God's word to slice through that darkness with truth that bears light. For you today, pick up your sword today or get ready to lose. 
You chew on that as you hit the rocky road.